Alright, so with this problem we're trying to determine the normal stress in the member CG of this truss system, which is this member right here. And we are given the force P, which is equal to 4,200 pounds. And we are also given the diameter of the member CG, which is 0.75 inches. So the way we're going to have to solve this is we're going to have to make a couple cuts in this truss system. The first cut being directly through the center, the middle here, horizontally. And that's because we, when we need to find the force in a member, we need to make a cut directly through that member. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the lower half of this cut. I'm just going to draw it just as sticks. And we're going to draw all the forces on it. So we have the force in the member CG right here. We have the 4,200 pound force here. Oops. We have a force going up from the member CF. And we have a force in the member BF. We have a force in the member AE. And we have a force in the member DE. So this point right here is point F. And we're looking to solve for this force right here, CG. So if we go ahead and we take the moment about the point F, that's going to cancel out this force, this force, this force, and this force, because the line action of all four of these forces goes directly through the point F. So the horizontal distance when we're doing the sum of moments about the point F is going to be zero for all of these forces, leaving us with just two forces to work with, which is a lot better than about six. So as of right now, we have two unknown forces, so we cannot do some of forces about point F quite yet. We need to make one more cut, and we're going to do that cut as a vertical cut right here. Because if we solve for this force right here, AE, that will allow us to solve for the force in the member CG. So we're going to look for the force FA, excuse me, the force in the member AE, and we're going to do that by making this vertical cut. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that right side from that cut. And we're going to draw all the forces on it once again. And we're looking for this force in the member AE. I'm going to go ahead and draw some coordinate axes here just to be clear. So we can see that the force AE has a horizontal and vertical component. Um, and the other two unknown forces, FAB and FDE, only have a horizontal component. So what we can do is we can solve for the force AE by doing sum of forces in the y direction, setting that equal to zero. And we just need the vertical component of the force AE. So if we come back up to our picture, we can see that we are given this vertical distance, three feet, and the horizontal distance of this triangle, four feet. So we know that this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, and the hypotenuse of this triangle is equal to 5 feet. So by taking just the vertical component, we can do 3 over 5 times the force AE to get just the vertical component. And then we're going to have minus 4,200 pounds, this force right here. And now we're going to go ahead and solve for the force AE. And we're going to get that the force AE is equal to 7,000 pounds. And so now what we can do is we can apply that to our first cut and solve for the force CG just by taking the moment about point F. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So sum of moments, excuse me, sum of moments about the point F is equal to zero. Our positive moment is going to be counterclockwise. And so if we go back up to the picture. We can see that we have a distance of four feet between each of these points and the point F. So we know that our distance for both of those two forces, FAE and FCG, the vertical component is going to be four feet. Now we just need to figure out if it's a positive or negative moment by doing the right hand rule. So the force AE, the vertical component of that force, causes a negative moment about the point F. So we're going to have negative, then the distance four feet. And then we're going to just take the vertical component of that force. So we're going to do the same thing we did a minute ago, three-fifths times the force AE. And then the force in the member CG causes a positive moment about the point F. So we're going to have a plus. Distance is four. We're taking just the vertical component. So three-fifths FCG. We can go ahead and move this term over to this side. And then solve. So we're going to have four 
3 fifths FAE is equal to 4 3 fifths FCG. These two cancel on both sides, and we get the FAE is equal to FCG, which is equal to 7,000 pounds. So now we have the force, and in order to solve for the normal stress, we just need to get the cross-sectional area of the member CG now. And the cross-sectional area is pi over 4 d squared when given just the diameter, which is what we have. And if we go ahead and solve for this area, which is 0 0.7, the diameter is 0 0.75 inches, we get that the cross-sectional area is 0 0.44179 inches squared. So now the formula for the normal stress is equal to the force through that member times or divided by the cross-sectional area of that member which we now have both of these. So 7,000 pounds divided by 0 0.44179 inches squared and this is going to give us 15,844 PSI, which is equal to 15.844 KSI. And they wanted our final answer in KSI, so that's our answer. And that's it for this problem.